If you can see a deal pipeline, you are all likely very familiar with what's going on here. Um, but what I want to talk about is how HubSpot predominantly and using things like arrows, talking to HubSpot, can really streamline this entire session. So again, both that customer facing experience and as importantly, your internal teams are all in the know and aware. So we have a deal, it hits closed one here. I'm gonna jump into this Acme Industries deal that Scott was just showing. They signed their agreement and it is closed one. So a couple of things happen when your sales reps fill out information in here or it's passed over from tools like a grain or um, air call or other things, the HubSpot workflow and automation system can really kick in and leverage some of this stuff. So in this example, what I'm saying is when a deal is closed one and handoff notes are present and the sales rep has identified what tier the customer is buying, kick off a little workflow in HubSpot. And essentially what we're doing now is creating a onboarding record. So this is part of that handoff piece where a big way to gain efficiencies and streamline it is to automate things. One for the obvious, um, not needing to do the manual work, but I think as importantly, and that is also quality assurance to make sure that everything is handed off to the right person and in real time. So what this workflow is looking for is deals hitting a closed one stage where the sales rep has identified what that ultimate product they're purchasing is or tier they're purchasing is, this, and then going into a branch and starting to create those onboarding records. Now, in this example, what I'm using is service hub and tickets to manage that onboarding record off of. This is the piece that Arrows, the product and the plan attaches to. So Arrows is that customer facing extension of the process, put tasks in there, have customers complete them. And as that happens, a ton of activity and usage data is passed back into HubSpot. What needs to happen though, is the onboarding uh, manager or rep needs to be aware of some of that information that was on the sales deal. We are all used to slacking sales reps and asking questions, and that is a waste of time essentially. So use HubSpot to pass that information from the deal to the onboarding record. And what happens when these workflows run, I also have an if then branch to make sure that the right um, tier is getting the right assignee internally, getting the right information passed over, but things like that pricing tier, things like the deal amount, the Panda doc contract and um, the handoff notes are now being passed over and added to a record created in our onboarding pipeline. So this is an example of where they start. This, these stages or these statuses in this ticket pipeline are going to be matching that customer facing plan that I'll show you in a second. And then there's a ton of automations that can actually move these through these stages as customers complete their tasks. So what happens now is a second workflow kicks in. We know there's an onboarding record that exists, but again, we wanna make it easier for our onboarding teams and our customer success teams to actually then use this information and engage with customers. So we get into a second workflow here. Let me zoom out a bit. Where now what we're looking for is, is that ticket or that record ready for onboarding? Again, another layer of is the pricing tier known? I try to keep this a little bit on the more basic side. You can obviously add as many branches and functionality from HubSpot's workflows that you're used to. But again, another branch now saying, all right, if they are a starter customer, create and attach an arrows onboarding plan automatically to that record so that the customer uh, rep, again, doesn't have to spend time doing some of this manual work. And you can set these up in a way where it's picking and choosing your right template from the arrow side. It's adding contacts that are already on that ticket that were passed over from that deal. And you can even automatically send an invite to that customer, letting them know, here's an example of your plan, get in here and get going. So all that is done in these workflows and that saves so much time and so much room for error that's avoided when handing off information between teams. And then the other thing I'm highlighting in here is you can actually send a plethora of different notifications using just HubSpot's native features. So depending on the customer type or the onboarding type. What I want to do in this case is send a Slack notification. In this case, send just a HubSpot task or send a high level, high priority email to a customer or to an internal rep if it's an enterprise account. And what's really special about this is you can then, again, leverage data that's already in HubSpot from those personalization tokens. So those handoff notes are here now. They're being passed to the onboarding record. You're avoiding all that manual back and forth that neither side really likes. And when that's going on, that means the customer is not getting the service that they signed up for and were promised. And most importantly, if that's not the case, you are now creating churn risk. Because if that customer, as Yamini pointed out, as others mentioned today, if that customer is not seeing value, especially very early in the process, they are more propensed to churn 
and in turn lose all that marketing and sales money you just spent acquiring them. So these notifications are intended to make sure everyone is aware there is a customer ready, let's get going with them. Now, what does this actually look like? So here is that onboarding record that gets created. I have an onboarding section in here. This is the ticket. This is the Arrows and HubSpot CRM card where information as customers are going through their plans actually updates in real time. So now as the rep managing this onboarding, I can have a very, very quick overview and understanding of where the customer is. My sales team in theory should never have to ask me where a customer is. They can go to that ticket pipeline because things are automated and moving through there. If they wanna go a layer deeper, they can open this. And this onboarding section highlights everything I need to know or care about in this very moment. So I know who the customer is. I see my handoff notes. I see my contract. Now this part down here is actually talking to Arrows of the plan. So if I open this plan here, this is a customer facing version of an Arrows plan. The idea is customers receive this. There's a set of tasks. They mark their, their, they mark their way through these and complete tasks. And this world is, can be fully automated and set up dynamically to understand which tasks need to be presented to a customer. As long as all that information lives inside of HubSpot on that record, it can automatically show certain phases, certain tasks, making sure the customer is actually seeing what they need to see. One power or one type of feature um, that gets commonly used in any process, but especially early life cycle moments is collecting information from customers, so forms. These forms are also actually talking in real time to these properties. So as a customer updates these forms, this is all gonna get updated. Here's the live part of the demo where we're gonna try this together. So let's say there are 200 people on this team and everyone is remote. I'm gonna hit submit here on the customer side. You'll see notifications here that that's done. The task gets marked automatically complete. This stage that the customer was in right now just got completed. And so a number of things happen. If I jump back into my ticket here and refresh, if all went to plan, now I will see those answers directly in this section here. So I can quickly know that, okay, this is the team size. This team actually is remote. That helps me go on with my onboarding process and set them up for success. And as importantly here, if that information is missing, now me, my human valuable expensive time can be used in a far more targeted way with this customer. So I can actually reach out and say, hey, Alex, looks like I'm still missing your team size. Or better yet, I can just grab the link to that task and send him directly to that task and have him fill it out. But it's being far more pointed with my human time and it makes that customer feel valued and known because they actually also feel that I know where they are in their process. The other thing that happened here is when I completed that task, you'll notice this phase went to complete. And if I jump back to that onboarding pipeline here, that just happened in real time. So you saw that move from there to this integration setup. And that is an arrows pipeline automation that's essentially writing directly to the ticket status or the deal stage. And again, the team now knows where this customer is in the process. They can jump in here and quickly take action if needed. Um, and everyone internally should have a good sense of where that customer is in the process. Now, the other advantage of this type of setup is Arrows itself is also passing around 50 data points about this activity on the plan back into HubSpot. So as a manager, you can always jump into your manager view and see all of those individual data points. But things like what is the status of this plan? What task is the customer on? How many days have they been on a specific task or phase? And these are just properties now on the HubSpot side, which lets you do some really fun stuff like build high level reporting based off of that activity, like trigger more automations and workflows, like set up different pipeline views and lists views to really pool customers um, or to, to really keep customers making progress while your team and as a leader in success, you can also get an overview of everything. So here's a couple examples of, I just care about customers that have an onboarding plan that have overdue tasks on them. And I wanna know which specific task they are on and for how long. Now I can filter down and zoom in on accounts that need my attention and need my time and allow those that are just progressing naturally to keep doing their thing. Or maybe I wanna focus on just customers that have a target date in the next 30 days. So the power of this becomes taking that data and then manipulating it however you want using HubSpot's filters and workflows and automations to actually then give everybody in your internal organization visibility into that process. Um, and you can do all sorts of fun stuff with this then because you can do, again, things like workflows. So I have triggers set up for 
when a customer is on a specific task and that specific task has been overdue for X number of days, send me a Slack notification filled with personalization tokens showing all that. Or when customers on our actual arrows plans answer specific questions in their forms, things like, are you using a specific object or what does your onboarding process look like? I actually channel those directly into a voice of customer channel in Hubs or in errors or Slack, sorry, using that HubSpot workflow to capture that and pass it over. So it's all about how do I reduce human time and effort used on these tasks while actually making it a better customer experience and keeping everyone informed. And then if I quickly jump to a more filled out pipeline, you can see here, this is highly customized, but there are now data points from arrows pulling into in these individual cards. I have tags for specific milestones that I wanna care about. And what this ultimately lets me do as a human is not necessarily replace me or get rid of my job. It actually makes me far more effective and more efficient because I can now pick and choose where I'm spending time, which customers need more of my attention versus which ones are up and running and, and kind of going on their own. And then the part I love most is the ability to, um, well, the part I love most is customers making progress and being successful. But the part I love second most is being able to then also give feedback to sales and marketing and success on why customers are stuck where they are. So if I notice, you know, 10 plans get sent out, nine people are stuck on the same task, that's a bad task. Let me go figure out how to fix that part of my plan or process versus trying to overhaul everything. And enough of those little moments of garnering feedback and sharing it with the right department is ultimately how you make that experience more and more seamless and streamlined, which in turn keeps customers moving, reduces churn, and hopefully keeps revenue growing in your business.